Okay, so uh, hello, I'm Liz Alcamo. That's in good space. Uh, I'm the Senior Director of Corporate Development at 4D Molecular Therapeutics, and I am delighted to be here to uh, introduce to you the company. So 4D is a gene therapy company with a transformative discovery platform for the discovery, the generation of highly uh, optimized proprietary adeno-associated viruses. Um, well, look at that. Uh, these AAV vectors should target any tissue type or cell type in the human body. Um, and with that reason in mind, that gives us good reason to believe that these will be very valuable in the development of therapeutics for the treatment of devastating diseases with significant unmet medical needs. The company was founded uh, two years ago by Dr. David Kern and Dr. David Schaefer. Dr. Kern, our CEO, is a uh, clinician scientist and biotech entrepreneur with over 20 years experience in the design and development of uh, therapeutic viral vectors. Uh, Dr. Schaefer, our CSO, is uh, a professor of uh, bioengineering and the director of the Stem Cell Center at the University of California, Berkeley, and he's a world leader and pioneer in this field of AAV research. The platform technology is therapeutic vector evolution. And I'll go into more detail in a bit, but suffice it to say that the variants that come out of it um, form the cornerstone of our intellectual property portfolio. They've also given us a fantastic opportunity to work with some wonderful uh, collaborative partners, as well as to set up our own um, internal pipeline of therapeutic products. The company is about 30 strong at this point, and we're located in Emory, California, which is next to Berkeley and just across the bridge from San Francisco. So a little bit more about uh, the discovery platform, Therapeutic Vector Evolution. Uh, this platform enables us to select for AAV variants that are capable of overcoming the hurdles that first-generation wild-type AAVs face. Now, when you think about um, developing a therapeutic, you think about uh, the cell types you need to hit, you think about how you're going to deliver that uh, viral therapeutic to get to those cell types, and you think about neutralizing antibodies that could shut that viral vector down before it gets to the cells of interest. So when we think about AAV and selecting for AAVs that have particular desired traits, we think about their ability to target a tissue we think about their ability to target that tissue in the context of the route of administration that's the most clinically relevant route of administration. And we think about their ability to target that tissue even in the presence of naturally occurring um, neutralizing antibodies. These are the 4D MT vectors. So what is this platform about and how does it work? Well, we begin with the wild type AAVs, those are the primitive capsids, and we subject those AAVs to mutagenesis. It could be random mutagenesis, we insert peptides into particular regions, we do directed substitutions based upon ancestral nodes, we do capsid shuffling. And what that gets us to is about 25 libraries um, with various different mutations embedded in them. And from that, we get to, when we pull it, a master library of 100 million variants. So let me just say that again, that's 100 million AAV variants. Uh, a lot of variants to choose from. So how do we identify the variant, which I've put up here in a little red dotted line, the variant that has the ideal characteristics for the therapy that we want to be delivering? Well, what we do is we subject that library through several rounds of selective screening. Take that library, you inject it into a non-human primate uh, by the clinically relevant route of administration, harvest the tissue, uh, harvest the genomes out of that tissue, and create a new library. The library goes back into the non-human primate. Repeat the process. Do several rounds of selections, and over the course of those rounds of selections, you're actually enriching over time for the variants that are the winners. These are the variants that are able to overcome the hurdles, uh, be they anatomical, be they just cellular tropism, be they news neutralizing antibodies, uh, so that at the end of the day, you wind up with a small handful of variants. Now, what do you do with that small handful of novel AV variants? Well, the next thing we do is we characterize them. So we've got our discovery team in place. 4D has actually developed uh, some very great in vitro and in vivo capabilities to support this. Um, on the in vitro side, we've developed a, and built a team of scientists that are dedicated to uh, culturing 
uh, particular and rich populations of cells of interest. So they could be retinal pigment epithelial cells, as you see in the uh, upper panel here, uh, derived uh, from uh, induced pluripotent stem cells from humans. Uh, they could be beating cardiomyocytes. They could be primary hepatocytes, uh, you name it. This group can also do complex cultures. Uh, as I'm showing right here, this is a retina cup, an eye cup. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with culturing these sorts of systems, that's, that's out like uh, six months that thing's been growing. Um, and it's really quite an amazing feat to me to see the, the complexity in that tissue culture dish and how well that models what's happening in a human. The company's also built out its in vivo capabilities. We've got a fantastic Rolodex of CROs that uh, are experts in various different uh, tissues. And in addition to that, we've also built out internal capabilities to uh, assess the tissues once they come out of those mice and non-human primates. This is depicted on the slide on the upper right. That would be a mouse retina after transduction with one of our AAV variants. And in the panel on the lower right, uh, an in vivo image in life of a non-human primate transduced with, one of, with another one of our AAV variants. So all in all, um, right now, we've got more than 10 discovery programs ongoing with leads in a number of these programs as marked by the asterisks. So uh, enough of the background. Um, I'd like to move on and talk a little bit about the data. So what I've got up here is um, a schematic along across the top of one of our lead discovery programs, this being our program in the retina, uh, wherein we deliver the the AAV vector to the vitreous, so the jelly of the eye, the least disruptive place to deliver an AAV therapeutic uh, for the treatment of conditions, uh, retinal conditions. Each of the various different uh, steps of the selection process is marked as a separate arrow, rounds one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, what I did not mention in my previous slide is that when we make that new library for that next round of selection, we can actually sample the library. So we can, in real time across the selection, uh, assess how the pool is evolving, uh, identify the dominant motifs that are coming out of it, and ultimately figure out when we've achieved convergence. So Melissa Cotterman, uh, who leads our discovery effort, uh, has been doing this in a number of different programs. Um, as we can see here, her data uh, demonstrates that in this particular retina program, we have achieved convergence by around round four, round five. Here's a great example, though, of how you can monitor the pool. You can see that red pie chart. Uh, so the pie represents the pool, and the pieces represent a particular motif. You can see that red motif growing. It, it, it begins to take over the pool with each successive round of evolution. Now, here's an example of what we do next when we take that variant. In this case, um, Tandis uh, Vazin's group, uh, the in vitro cell modeling group, uh, has cultured up retinal pigment epithelial cells and transduced them with either the um, variant of interest from, from 4D, that's V4, or uh, AAV2, uh, AAV2 being the background for this particular variant. And um, what you're seeing in the upper panels, uh, that's natural GFP. So the variant is clearly doing a, a better job at transducing the cultures, uh, both the number of cells and the extent to which those cells are getting hit by variant. Um, in the lower panel, that's a magnification of the uh, retinal pigment epithelial cells. And you can see ZO1 is a counter stain. This is a 95% enriched population of human RPE cells uh, induced from uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. On the right panel, we'll give you a little quantification of that. Uh, we've got about a five-fold increase, six-fold increase in the expression levels off the, or the percentage of GFP cells, excuse me, in the culture over the AAV2 backbone, uh, the parental. And you can see that that is dose-dependent with increases, increasing multiple, uh, multiplicities of infection. Here's another program uh, that we've got ongoing. This is a program that we're working on in collaboration with Unicure, one of our partners, and it's for the discovery of variants that target the liver after IV delivery. Um, this is interesting. This is not the slide. Okay. This is not the slide that I'd imagined, but it works for us. Again, you see the six rounds, and you see at the end of that the, um, uh, the, the pie chart of representation in that slide. Again, going in vitro and looking at what's happening, we see that uh, the variants, variant one and two, are doing better than the wild-type 
parental serotype that was AAV2 at transducing human primary hepatocytes that uh, Tandesi's group is cultured, uh, as well as other variants that people are using in the art right now um, as they approach the clinic, AAV8 and AAV9. Again, if we do that quantification, we see um, fourfold or so, uh, maybe fivefold increase over the parental serotype as well as the clinically relevant um, uh, others. Okay, last program that we have here. This is the BRAIN program. Um, this is, again, with Unicure, and there should be, I apologize, a logo at the bottom that says Unicure. Um, this is intrathecal delivery uh, to the brain. Uh, again, six rounds of discovery, and again, uh, we see convergence where we've got now one, two, three, four leads, uh, lead motifs, as well as a number of others marked in gray. Um, analysis of this uh, population um, by looking at primary uh, neurons, IPS derived, uh, shows superior transduction of the variant over uh, AAV2 and AAV9. And there you see again. Our last program, which we've just gotten, this is hot off the presses, um, our variance four is the heart. Uh, so this is intravenous delivery to cardiac muscle. Uh, we were able to achieve convergence by around four, and we are now uh, in the process of manufacturing those molecules and delivering them to uh, non-human primates as well as to cells in vitro. So here's a list of our programs uh, in discovery and um, where we're sitting with them. Um, I should add that these programs require an awful lot of manufacturing capabilities. So one thing I did not mention is that uh, we've been working very hard to developing those manufacturing capabilities. Uh, Anthony Davies, our COO, and uh, the head of our manufacturing group has uh, put a pilot plant uh, in, in action and is now uh, thinking very innovatively about how to improve manufacturing in that plant uh, going forward. So it's a partnering meeting. I, it would be remiss if I did not put up a partnering slide. Uh, we are very interested in partnering. Um, we want to be able to enable our partners' products. Of course, we want to retain uh, broad 4D rights. So what we do when we talk to our partners is we talk about the disease indication, we talk about the transgene payload, and we talked about our vector. And that combination is what we uh, work with our partners to deliver to them. We've got a number of collaborators, uh, collaborative partners. They've all been wonderful to work with. And we're really looking forward to seeing these uh, partnerships grow. So on the last note, I'll just put my team slide up uh, and uh, point out uh, Melisse, Melissa and Tandice, who provided all the data here today. Um, I will take some questions now and hand the podium back to my good friend. 